So what is computational linguistics? According to the Association for Computational Linguistics, this is the, the, perhaps the, 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 bigger, the biggest organization in this field, uh, computational linguistics uh, is defined as the scientific study of language from this computational perspective. Uh, computational linguists uh, should be interested in providing computational models of various kinds of linguistic phenomena. The, the goals, as this implies, is to ob obtain simulation, and the, 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 the term simulation is important here, simulation of uh, linguistic phenomena as they appear in, uh, in, in the human uh, level of the use of language. Okay, but what are the assumptions of this perspective. This, is, this perspective is not neutral at all about what is language and how can we analyze the language. Well, there is a, a very important assumption here is that language is a knowledge-based process. It, perhaps we, we can consider that this is not dangerous, but we have to take into account that this, this is an assumption. Uh, some people, for instance, the, the Psychologists at the beginning of the, of the 20th century wouldn't agree with about this. And there is another assumption like that the, the goal of language, in this case communication, can be completely formalized by means of production system. And this is, uh, uh, this is an assumption and it, it's not true at all. It's, uh, this is a uh, uh, can be considered a, 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 closer, a close approach to the study of language because we cannot go uh, to, the, to the real kernel, to the real core of language. We, have, we, we obtain this initial approach taking into account that the language should be formalized using this kind of production system which are in fact a kind of mathematical device and as I mentioned, this is the this is uh, the, the the reason why the computational model of language uh, uh, was greatly influenced by the uh, generative model of language proposed by the first Chomsky. Okay, and um, again, uh, this perspective has also some limitation. The first one, the role of emotion in language learning. I have said that this, is, uh, that this limitation is uh, connected with the, the semantic gap that I mentioned before. Uh, it's not possible to explain and to reproduce or simulate language learning in this computational perspective. There's no way for doing that. We can learn some uh, models, some relations, in terms of words, in terms of syntax. But the notion of learning, as we naturally understand that notion, is not possible to reproduce using this perspective. And, uh, the second limitation, or one of the most strong limitations in this perspective, is that uh, the formalization of cultural and social dependencies in the creation of an understanding of language in cases like humor irony is quite complex. In fact, I should say that it's impossible to formalize that kind of, of behavior. Nevertheless, there are some advantages. If not, <laughs> I should finish my talk now. <laughs> uh, okay, computational linguistics provides methods, notions, and tools to study human languages, and in fact, I think that <coughs> human language is a very complex phenomenon. All the metaphors may be useful to understand, and this is, uh, from a theoretical point of view, this is another useful approach to the study of language. Uh, at least, uh, if not all the uh, components of the human language, at least some of these aspects uh, can be very well analyzed and understood and simulated using this approach. Mainly, morphology has been very, very well analyzed from a computational point of view, and now we 
I think we understand very well how morphology works in real languages, in real human languages. Semantic has been partially uh, modeled using this approach. Semantics is complex, but there are some interesting uh, proposals from the, the field of uh, uh, computational semantics in which we can obtain at least partial, uh, very well structured model of the semantic in a language. And pragmatics is a, well, a, a field to study as now, but we are obtaining the first uh, results in, the, in this analysis. And I think it's, it's interesting how it, it's uh, evolving just now. And uh, as part of this general framework that constitutes computational linguistics, Natural language engineering focuses specifically on the implementation. This has a more uh, in engineering uh, interest, a more is a more engineering or, uh, oriented uh, uh, subfield of computational linguistics. Uh, uh, so, it's uh, natural language engineering focuses on practical application using this kind of techniques, the computational morphology, uh, uh, formal grammars. And so, in order to obtain commercial systems, mainly, and this commercial system ranges from uh, speech recognition, text for speech, machine translation, or dialogue systems. So, the range of uh, uh, commercial application is quite, quite uh, wide. And I will concentrate using this framework in what are the main ideas of a spoken dialogue system. Uh, my, uh, my goal is not to study what is a spoken dialogue system by itself, it's very complex. But I would like to concentrate just on what are the main architectures that are just now being used in order to implement a spoken dialogue system. There are two main, uh, there are two main uh, models or architectures. What I have here uh, labeled as the standard pipeline model this model tries to uh, organize the uh, implementation of a dialogue system as a, a sequential process that goes through a series of steps in order to obtain the communication from the user to the system and backward. 